Hey guys, this is Mr. Decker coming to you from the Smart Lab. This is Unit 2, Lesson 7. This time we're working on a mini project and it's focused on styles. So we've done a little bit with cascading style sheets, learning how to change the color, size, uh, font family, and font style of our text, even text decorations. So let's jump into this. Our computer science standards for this lesson are incorporating existing code, media, and libraries into original programs and giving attribution, and documenting programs in order to make them easier to follow, test, and debug. Our essential question for this lesson is, how can you express your personal style on a web page? And just an FYI, right, you need to answer that essential question after you have completed your programming on code.org. So after you've completed the lesson on code.org, you will come back to this Canvas assignment page and follow these steps for answering the essential question. Uh, right here, you see the, proje uh, the project rubric. So you must have at least two headings of different sizes. You must have at least two paragraphs. You must have at least one ordered or unordered list. You must have headings of different colors. You must change at least one font size and you must change at least one font style or font family in order to get a 100 on this little mini project. It shouldn't take you any longer than the week. You've got the full week to knock it out starting Monday morning to Friday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Right? So plenty of time to work your way through this project and get it done. Now, I am going to be working my way through this and doing my own mini project, but I don't want you to copy what I'm doing. I'm just going to model what I want you to do. So making sure you understand you are not creating the same website I'm creating. You can create a very similar website to what I'm creating, but I want you to make your own website. Like I'm going to do mine on my favorite books, right? So I want you to do one on your favorite anything or even a recipe on how to make a Susie sunshine cake or something like that. Whatever you want to do, as long as it is middle school appropriate, right? Now, per usual, best practice is to watch the video, pause the video, then completing it on code.org, repeat until you're finished. Uh, this video that you're already watching is mandatory, so make sure you're signed in with your school Google account on code.org. Let's head over there now. So over to code.org, I'm already signed in. You'll know you're signed in if you see your name up here. Now, let's scroll down the screen. Your links are probably down at the very bottom. I'm in the teacher portal, so my stuff is up at the top. But anyway, you need to go to CSD Unit 2, Web Development. Once you're there, your page will look like this. You'll scroll down and down and down until you see Lesson 7 Mini Project. And it might show up like this, so you can click that little arrow and take a gander at it like that. There are only uh, six bubbles for us to work our way through on this lesson, so let's go ahead and jump in bubble one. So like it says here, Remembering our question of the day or our essential question for the lesson, it's how can you express your personal style on a web page? Well, you use CSS, right? Uh, it's a little more complicated than just saying use CSS, but, you know, cascading style sheets. In this lesson, students will be creating their own styled web pages. The lesson starts with a review of cascading style sheets, and then we'll design our web page and identify which uh, CSS properties we'll need and create our web pages in Web Lab. Um, if you really, 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 really want to, you can open up this project guide and that can help you plan for stuff. 
It's not required. There's no way for you to, to even submit that to me unless you email me a copy of it or share it with me. But if you want to use that, you can. You do not have to, though. If you're like me and your ideas just come about organically, then, you know, uh, you can move right through this project without having ever put together a project guide. Again, I'm not requiring you to do that. So let's do some review. And yes, every single one of these is required. A, B, C, D, E. I'm going to go through them with you. So don't fret. No worries, my pets. You will be fine. All right. Here are some C CSS properties that you may have seen in the past couple of lessons. You can use them to review the styles you might want to use for your web page. Let's jump into A, add a heading rule set. All right, here's an opportunity to be creative and customize the heading. Add a rule set for the heading. So, all right. So right here, we've got a bunch of code sitting here. Uh, on line four, we've got our link to the style sheet already there for us, so we don't have to mess with that. And then right here, elephants on line seven. It's an H1 tagged heading, so it's the biggest heading possible. So let's jump over to the style sheet. The, we've got a body rule set. Let's put our cursor at the end of line three by clicking there. Hit enter twice to create a blank line four and a blank line five. I just hit my enter key twice to make that happen. So on this uh, line, we're gonna type in H1 to make an H1 rule set for that elephant's heading right here. Now, I'm going to hit my space bar one time. I'm going to hold down my shift key and make that curly brace. The curly brace key is right next to the letter P on your keyboard. Then I'm going to hit enter twice. And I'm going to use the closed curly brace there. Now, the closed curly brace is right next to the other curly brace. Both of the keys are right next to each other, right next to the letter P on your keyboard. All right, so now click on line six so that your cursor is blinking on line six. And now we're gonna put a rule in here. So I wanna change the color I think it wanted me to do, add a, just add a rule set. So let's customize it. I always like, uh, doing a text decoration. So type in the word text, T-E-X-T. -E Select text decoration from the dropdown. And then let's underline by clicking right there on the underline option. Now that it's underlined and it's working, I wanna put a semicolon so that the computer understands that that's the end of that particular rule. I'm gonna hit my enter key to create a blank line seven and have my cursor blinking there where I'm ready to type. Now, let's change the color. Click on color. I'm gonna choose elephants are gray. I kind of like this cadet blue. Yeah, that looks good. And another semicolon to make it final, right? So, all we've done here, we've chosen a text decoration to underline our heading, and we've chosen a new font color for our heading. So let's go back to our index page. We'll click finish, and we're ready for part B of this bubble. We're still on bubble two, we're on Bubble two, part B. Change the text color. Use CSS to change the color of the headings and paragraphs. Okay. Change the color of both the heading and the text. Do this. Add a rule set for the heading to make it a different color, and then add a rule set for the paragraphs to make them another color. Alrighty. So I'm gonna click there so I can see all of my code. I'm gonna click on the style sheet and I'm gonna put my cursor at the end of line three. I'm gonna hit enter twice, and let's go ahead and work on our H1 tag, which is pizza up here. So H1 space, 
Curly brace. Enter down twice. Curly, close curly brace and then click in the middle of that so we can put in a rule. We're just changing the color this time. So color. Uh, pizza is usually a red or yellow kind of color. So let's think here. Pizza, pizza, pizza. Let's go with dark orange. Pizza. All right. And now uh, let's see. Rule set for the heading to make it a different color and a rule set for the paragraphs. Okay, so let's make a rule set for the paragraphs. Put your cursor at the end of line seven by clicking there. Enter twice. And then P for paragraph. And then make your curly braces. And then what color do I want my paragraphs to be? Let's see. Crimson could work. Yeah, that looks cool. I like that. And then my semicolon there. Oh, I forgot to put my semicolon up here. Make sure you remember to put your semicolons in, kids. All right. Let's see. I think that looks pretty good. Do, 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 do. I'm enjoying it. I'm enjoying the pizza. Per usual. Love the pizza. All right. And we'll finish there. Moving on to our next little practice here. Uh, review challenge, align text. Align the author's names to the right. All right, we can do that. We want the names of the authors to align to the right side of the page. Do this, figure out which tag holds the author's names and add a rule set for that tag to move it to the right side of the screen. So like it shows here, we want to move the author's names, Helen Keller and Grace Hopper, over to the right-hand side. So let's find, using our inspector tool, which... Okay, so it looks like the H3 tag is the tag we need to create a rule set for and move these names over to the right with text align. So, oh, we already have an H3 rule set. Very good. So put your cursor at the end of line six in the code. So right there, here's line six. Click right there. Hit your enter key one time. And then we're going to type in the word text. And then click text align. And then choose right. Semicolon. And perfect. So now our author names are showing up right aligned. Very good, we did it, finish. All right, now practice D, we're changing the font family. We're gonna use CSS to change the font family of the headings and paragraphs, okay. So let's change the font family of both the heading and the text. There are several font families, including cursive, fantasy, serif, and monospace. Do this. Add a rule set for one of the heading types to make it a different font family. And then add a rule set for the paragraphs to make them another font family. Okay. So we're changing the font family for a heading and a font family for the paragraphs. So let's go to the style sheet. Let's enter down twice from the end of line three. Let's do our, uh, let's do, let's see, what was this other one? H3, let's do an H3 rule set here. H3, and that's going to change this text and this text font family. So H3, space bar, curly brace, close curly brace, and to make that happen, I'm just typing in that curly brace, shift in the curly brace key, then entering twice and putting the curly brace there. And the reason why I always do that first is so that I have room in here, right, to put my rules inside the rule set. All right. So we're changing the font family. So type in font, F-O-N-T, select font family, and then choose the... 
Um, one, choose any of those, really. Choose any of those font families. Put your semicolon in, and you'll see the change appear over here. If you don't see the changes, you can always hit refresh and save, and that makes sure your changes take place as long as you put your code in correctly. All right, so put your cursor at the end of line 7 just by clicking there. Hit enter twice. And on line 9, we're going to make a rule set for our paragraph. So P, space, open curly brace, enter twice, close curly brace. And right in between them on line 10, we're going to change the font family. We're going to F-O-N-T, font family. And we made those fantasies. So let's make these inherit. Uh, that's boring because that's what it already is. So font family, font family, sans serif. Yeah, I like that. That changes it. That makes it obvious that a change occurred. Looks good. I like it. Let's finish. And now we're on uh, practice E. Change the font size. Change the size of the fonts for the paragraphs and headings using CSS. All right. Change the font size. Change the font size of both the heading and the text. You can specify the font size in terms of PX. Example, 16 PX. Do this. Add a rule set for the heading to make it a different font size. And add a rule set for the paragraphs to make them another font size. All right. Doot. Doot. Into the style sheet we go. All right. So let's start off with an H1 heading. So I just... Click there and hit enter twice to make a blank line four and line five for my code. So H1 space, make your curly braces. In between them, font size. So F-O-N-T, select font size. And let's make the font size 40 PX. That makes it a little bit bigger. Let's make it even bigger, 60 PX. Yeah, I like it. And my semicolon. And then let's put our cursor at the end of line 7. Enter down twice. Let's create another rule set for the paragraphs. So P, space, make your curly braces, open and close. And click in between. Let's make another font size for the paragraphs. Font size, and let's make these size 20px. I think they'll be 20 pixels tall. And now that our text is that size, let's make our H3 headings bigger. So let's do enter twice down from there. And let's do H3 space, make our curly braces, open and close. And in between, font size. And let's do 40 for this. 40px, semicolon, whoop, semicolon, there we go. Now we're cooking with peanut oil. And just for fun, let's do a text decoration for the H1 tag up here to make it, it obvious that that's the top. So type in T-E-X-T, -E text decoration, underline, semicolon, very good. Pizza, deep dish pizza, I love deep dish pizza. And it says here, this style of pizza is famously associated with the city of Chicago, Illinois. They call it deep dish because it's deep. Sometimes it's more like a soup than a pizza, which is, uh, that is complete garbage information. <laughs> that is not true. Um, deep dish pizza should never be like a soup. If it is like a soup, then you got some garbage pizza. Um, Deep Dish Pizza in Chicago. I lived in Chicago for four years in downtown Chicago. Go to Lou Malnati's uh, Pizzeria. Go to uh, Giordano's Pizzeria. Either way, you'll get some fantastic Deep Dish Pizza. It's not going to be anything like soup. I don't get that. What are they even talking about? It is delicious. It's the best pizza on the planet. So if you're ever in Chicago, 
my recommendation, go to Lou Malnati's or go to Giordano's. Eat yourself some deep dish pizza, and you, like me, will discover that Chicago has the best pizza on the planet. All right, finish. We're on bubble three now. We're going to practice and learn how to use RGB codes. All right, let's check out how you can get even more colors by using RGB codes. Now, RGB is great. Uh, but you remember, you can always open up a new tab, go to HTML color names, just typing that in, hit your enter key, and go to the W3Schools link. And then remember, you've got all these options as well. So all you got to do is when you put in that color code for your rule set, color, colon, space, you can put in the name of any of these. So you could put in Navajo white, right? Or olive, or orange red, or papaya whip, or pink, or purple, or whatever right? And all of those will work with what you're trying to accomplish uh, in terms of color. So let's take a look at what it wants us to do here. So choose from the following activities. We're going to do both. Activity A, introduction to RGB. Learn about RGB and how it can be used to make custom colors. All right, let's jump in. Ooh, okay. Uh, RGB colors. All colors, whether they have names or not, can be described by the level of red, green, and blue light it takes to make them. This is called an RGB value, short for red, green, blue. You can use the widget to your left to try out different RGB values and see what colors they make. Use the sliders to adjust the levels of red, green, and blue light. For each of the colors below, match it to its RGB value. So, okay, so let's do A here. And A says red 216. So let's use the slider here. You just click down and hold. So 216. Green 191. And you can see the background changes color as I adjust the sliders. 191. Come on. 191. 191. Ah. 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 All right, um, 190, uh, 191, come on, yes, all right, 191, that's way harder than it should be, come on, man, all right, and then blue to 216, so red and blue are the same value, boop, there we go, and it makes this purple color, so A is matches up with 4 here, all right, and then let's make B here, red 255, so all the way up, green 239, 239, got it, and then blue 213. So this matches up with number one up there, so B is one, A was four. Let's do C now, red 250. Okay, and green 128, so not a lot of green in this one. And then blue 114, even less blue. Come on. 114, come on. 114, I just want you to be 114. Okay, well, let's try moving back towards it. No, uh, well, 115, I'm pretty close. 114, come on. 114, 114. I had it. I had it again. I have it. Okay. <sighs> that matches up with two. Let's do D here. Red 70, so a lot less red. Red 70, green 130, and blue 180. One eighty, one eighty. I'm trying to make a one eighty. Come on, man. This is well, one eighty one. Close enough. I know that's three. Uh, e one oh seven for red, and 
Green should be 142, so slightly higher. And blue should be all the way down to 35. Wow. Okay. That makes it very, very green. It's like an army green. 35. There we go. Cool. And that matches up with five. All right. So now we understand that the higher this number is, the more of that color is in the RGB value. So from zero to 255, right? Kind of play with it and see what you can make happen with your colors. Make all kinds of different shades of stuff. Finish, continue, and on to B, using RGB colors. Add RGB colors to a website. All right, let's work on doing that. So it says, you can use RGB, RGB values to get the exact color you want. Do this. Find the CSS rule set in the style sheet that gives the red words their style. Okay. So, oh, okay. So here's the red words being given their style. So red 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Those are from line 16 to line 29. And it says, update the styles. Oh, uh, find the, uh, it gives the red words their style. Okay, we did that. Update the styles for the green and blue words to try different colors using RGB codes. Okay. So now we're just changing these values you see here. And it gives you an example of what that color is going to look like on the screen when you click in there. So, <coughs> excuse me, let's update the styles for the green and blue words to try different colors using RGB codes and any, and any other rules you'd like for your page. Okay. Uh, so let's find green here. All right, so here's green. Um, it's all just showing up as the same green. So... The red is like a gradient style, and the blue is solid as well. So let's go in here and mess with these RGB values. So color green. We just need to type in, it looks like, RGB. Is there a space there? No. So open parentheses. The parentheses... To make those, it's up there on your 9 and 0, where your numbers are at the top of your keyboard. So parentheses, space, uh, it's red, green, and then blue. So we're going to make this very green. So let's give um, red a lower value, maybe even like 0, comma, or, okay. Uh, space comma um, then let's try for the green one 255 and then zero for blue and parentheses it's very bright green and semicolon all right now for the next one RGB, and I just backspaced all that out, space uh, for red, let's do like 20 maybe, and for green, let's do 235, and for blue, let's try um, 30. In parentheses, yeah, so it changes the greens ever so slightly. And let's go to the next one. RGB again. Open parentheses, space. Uh, let's try a little more red in it. Ooh, let's go 200 for green. And let's try 60 blue this time. Yep, changes the color green a little more. And 
And next one, green three, RGB, open parentheses, space, 50. Uh, let's see what like 220 green and 100 blue does. All right. And for the last one, green four, RGB, open parentheses. Uh, let's do like 30 red, 255 green, and like 140 blue. Yeah, cool. So there's a lot of blue in that green. All right, so um, let's try the blue ones. Let's make some blue ones. Okay, RGB. Open parentheses, space, um, let's see, red is first, zero red. Let's do zero green and 255 blue. Close the parentheses, semicolon. All right. And let's go to the next one, RGB. Open parentheses, space, let's do like 20 red, 40 green. 240 blue and semicolon. All right, that changes it ever so slightly. Let's do RGB, uh, open parentheses, space, 30 red, 60 green, 210 blue. And let's keep going. RGB, open parentheses, space, 40 red, 80 green, 190 blue, Whoop, semicolon. And for the last one, RGB, open parentheses, space, 50 red, 100 green, uh, 170 blue. Excellent. Most excellent. All right. I'm a fan of this. I like it. So it's teaching us kind of how the values in RGB adjust those colors. Let's finish. And let's head on over to bubble four and start working on our project. This icon means that this level is a part of a larger project. Changes will be saved across these levels. So four, five, and six on these bubbles, your save, your, whatever you do in your code and whatever you do on the style sheet is going to be saved across those levels. So, all right, let's add HTML to make the page you sketch in your project guide. Oh, I didn't do a project guide, so let's just go in here and make our website. So this code's already here for you. Um, on line one, it's saying, hey, computer, I'm going to use HTML code to tell you some stuff to do. And then it's like, oh, yeah, uh, here's where the HTML will start. Here's where the HTML will end. Inside the header, starting on line three, we've got our link to the style sheet. So that's helpful. We don't have to create the link code to link our HTML page to our style sheet. And then everything we want to appear over here, we need to put it inside the body. So starting on line seven in your code is where you're gonna to wanna to start putting in your stuff. So let's go ahead and put our header in. So h1 tag. And inside my h1 tag, I'm going to say my favorite books. And let's end that h1 tag. And it appears on my preview area. Awesome. I'm going to enter down twice, and I'm going to make an H3 tag. Actually, I'm going to make a paragraph here. And inside this paragraph, I'm going to say, here is a list of my favorite books. I have read each of these books multiple times. And I love them all, exclamation point. 
And let's end that paragraph. Beautiful. All right. And I'm going to make an H3 tag. And I'm going to call this my book or favorite book list. End it. There we go. And I'm going to enter down twice and let's start making this list. Um, I'm going to say right here that uh, this list is in no particular order. Because um, I'm honestly not sure about like what my favorite book is, what my second favorite book is, and so on. So I'm going to just put these in here. All right. Uh, get out of my way. I want more room to code. Okay. So on line 15 here, let's make our list. So to make an unordered list, it's a UL. If you want to make an ordered list, you would use an OL. So UL to get it started. I'm going to enter down several times, give myself space to make my list, and then I'm going to end my list there. Now my computer knows that I'm about to make an unordered list or a bulleted list. So let's make our list items, LI. Um, let's see. I really love the book Catcher in the Rye. One of my favorite books, definitely. Oops, this is a list tag. There we go, and then it shows up over here. And then next, another list tag for my next item. Uh, Lord of the Rings. Very good book series. There we go. Next, we will put in, you know what? I don't like how that's pushing that down. So let's backspace that back up here. So enter down. Let's make our next list tag. And I'm going to say, what's another favorite book? Ready Player One. Flash list. Boom. Let's do two more. Uh, another favorite book. Let's see. Another favorite book. Book that I've read. Dark Matter. It's a really good book. It's about um, multi-dimensional travel. Kind of intense book. All right, and then list, and let's see. What's another book that's really good that I have read? There's so many books that I've read, it's hard to narrow them down into this list, and that's why I made an unordered list, because I'm not even sure which ones I like better than others. Um... Let's see. I really love Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. And let's end this list. All right. This by no means is like a definitive list of my favorite books. It's what I could come up with on the spot, but I love all of these books. So for my website, I've got my H1 header. I've got a paragraph here. I've got an H3 heading. I have another paragraph, and I've got my list. Let's go back to our rubric and make sure we've got everything. So two headings of different sizes. That's a check. 
Uh, two paragraphs. Ooh, do I have two paragraphs? There's one here and one here. So yes, I do have two paragraphs. Must have at least one ordered or unordered list. That's a check. Headings must be different colors. Ooh, okay. So I need to go back and go to the style sheet. And my headings need to be different colors. So let's make an H1 rule set. H1 space, curly brace, close curly brace, and we need to change the color. And I'm going to go with, let's see, dark slate blue. That looks fancy. I like that. Semicolon. And then I want to underline this. So I'm going to put a text decoration on it as well. Underline, semicolon. Um, let's change the font family for it as well. Make it cursive. No, I don't like the way that cursive looks. It doesn't even look like cursive. What the? All right. Font family. Um, fantasy. Yeah, that looks pretty cool. I like that. Okay. Now let's do another, let's make this bigger as well. So let's do another one and we're going to do text or font, font size. And let's make it 60 pixels tall. There we go. That looks good. And let's click down here and make another rule set for our H3 tag. And we're going to make this different color. Let's see what would look good here. Cadet blue. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Um, semicolon. Let's enter down again. And let's change the font size of that and also underline it. So first let's underline it, text decoration, underline, semicolon, and then I'm gonna change the size. So font size, and let's do 30 PX for that, semicolon, very good. And then I'm gonna change the way my paragraphs look, so P, Curly brace, curly brace. And I think I'm working ahead of myself. Let me go back, back and look at the di directions here. Next you should, uh, okay, I did all the HTML. So yes, I got ahead of myself. And then on bubble five, now we're adding the style. So I got a little bit ahead of myself. We should have gone to bubble five before we started adding style to it, but that's okay. All right, let's add some more style. So back to where we were, messing with the paragraph. So I want to change the font for my paragraph. I'm also going to change the font for my list. So um, let's see, font family. And for this, I want to change it to Sans serif, that looks good. I also want to go back and change the font family for my H3 to match it up with my H1. And I, what did I choose? Fantasy? Yeah, favorite book list. Very good, very good, very good. Semicolon there, forgot to put that. Oh, semicolon here, forgot to put that. Goodness gracious, okay. All right, next rule for my paragraph rule set. Um, Hmm, I think I'm satisfied with it being in a black font. Let's see, for, let's, and I think I'm happy with the size of that text. Let's fix that. Now let's go enter down again and let's make a unordered list rule set. Open curly brace, close curly brace, and Let's change the color of this to match this. I think I used cadet blue. Yes, I did. 
for my H3 rule set. So color, color, let's find cadet blue. There it is. Boom, good. I like it. And I'm going to change the size of that as well. So font size. Let's see. Um, font size. Let's do 30px for that. Nope, 25. Yeah. All right, and there's my website. Is there anything else I want to change? I think I want to make this bigger. 40, yeah. Let's see. I think we're good. I think I have a website here. Let's finish. Let's go to bubble six. What does bubble six say? Next, check to make sure your page has everything you want. So let's check it against the rubric. Back over here, we went through those. I've got two headings of different sizes. I've got two paragraphs. I have my list. My headings are different colors now. Um, I did change multiple font sizes. And did I do a font style? I did some font families. I didn't do a font style. So let's go back to the style sheet. I'm going to change the font style of my paragraph. So font style. Um, let's put it in italics. Yeah, I like it. All right, so I'm done. I've met all of my own criteria in my rubric. I've got my favorite books, my heading, my two paragraphs, my secondary heading, which is an H3 tag, and then I've changed the color of a few different things. So I'm happy with this. I think it looks pretty good. Let's finish. And that is all of that lesson. I hope you guys enjoyed working on your project. Our next lesson will be on intellectual property. That's it. Hope you guys are having a good week.